It's true, y'all. I thought it could have been a false rumor, but it's true. Bananas growing at 7,200 feet. Crazy climb up here. I wonder how many feet we are. Let's go find out. I'm about 10 minutes early. Not sure where I'm supposed to meet them, so let's see if we can find anything. I don't know, maybe I should go up top. I found your room. We're about to get a tour. We're going to start in the greenhouse. Jerome, what's the name of your organization here? Where are we? We're at Central Rocky Mountain Permaculture Institute. Central Rocky Mountain Permaculture Institute. Institute. Yeah. Cool. And this is the greenhouse. Oh my word, it's true. There's bananas. How high are we, Jerome? I climbed an awful lot to get here. Well, we are at 7,200 feet. Uh, this is our, our, our climate batter technology that we've been developing over the last 30 years. Um, so this is a, uh, one of the intakes um, for bringing the warm, moist air into the soil and storing the heat okay. to be used later in the day or through the season. The warm, moist air goes into the soil and this greenhouse is down to uh, three, five feet. This is ten, nine years old. This. Uh, this greenhouse here and we've just actually taken a lot of um, plants out and replaced them with the 10 new tropical fruiting uh, exotic fruits so this is a, a brand new um, um, Brazilian cherry there's taro right down here a new mango tree and this is a, our nitrogen one of our main nitrogen fixing trees in here we just cut this off and you can see it's sprouting again we cut it back about three times a year for coppice and for mulching. Basil and pineapple and this is one of four varieties of bananas. Well these actually fruit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we've had When's their season here? Well there's not a season here. Uh, we have we've had about ten racks of bananas in the last nine years. <laughs> Red lady papaya. This is a custard apple that we just put in. Cuban red banana is a very special custardy type banana and you see this is all heavily mulched yeah and uh, some of this underneath here has chop and drop from the nitrogen fixing but we actually are, uh, are worm farming the pathways okay so this becomes a, a sustainable um, uh, way of getting worm farms for our compost tea operation so to get started in the soil what did you do well, we, we mulch pretty much. Okay. Yeah, we mulch. Um, can we peek under here and see the worms? Oh yeah, we can see the worms. Let's see if we can. Um, so. Okay. We have these pallets here, and then underneath here, you can see this is fairly well digested. Ah. See, that's basically another couple nice. of weeks, and we'll be that'll be all worm castings. Cuban red. There's another type of. Jerome, is this the only way this greenhouse is heated? No, no. Okay, how else do you heat it? Four different. Ways that he we have thermal mass, okay, uh, which is uh, all the stone in here, retaining walls, um, the water tanks that collect water from the roof, but also uh, get filled, and that's permanent storage during the winter time and during the summertime. The thermal mass actually cools the greenhouse in the summertime. We shade it with uh, canopy. Sometimes it's passion fruit. Sometimes it's uh, beans. This is a gabion wall. It's also more thermal mass. And then we have the wood burning sauna. And is this a wood burning stove right here? No. What is that? That's, that's, um, that's a pallet stove. Oh, okay. And that's another one of our backups. Okay, but you only use it if you have to. This is the wood burning sauna. Cool. And this, uh, this is also a spa. <laughs> so this heats up to 120 degrees and it's five inches of concrete plus the marble and then 10 inches of insulation, and there's a big wooden burning stove here. 
and we use mostly just scrap wood, uh, big logs, and and then I can do my Bikram yoga here, and then we open up the greenhouse after the sauna, and then hang a fan here, and it blows hot air into the greenhouse. More nice. Than. He's written this book. Very nice looking book, The Forest Garden Greenhouse. Yeah, we do a lot of design work now, and and not only in forest gardens, but you know, tropical greenhouses as well. What tropical plant have you tried and not been successful with? Well, we we didn't we weren't able to do uh, avocados uh, uh, because of okay. the wind pollination, and okay. we haven't been successful with mangoes, but we're trying again. But okay. we've been very successful with citrus and uh, jujubes and pie. Uh, uh, papaya. What's this, Jerome? That's this a, barrel of water. A tank uh, that catches the water off the roof and then it pumps it up to a higher tank at, where we use it for gravity feed. How cold does it get here in the winter? Uh, we, we, uh, we're zone six, so we don't get below uh, 10 below. This is a pomegranate, and you can see we have and this some, is some fruiting. Some <laughs> fruiting in here. Pomegranate at 7,200 feet. This kumquat has fruited uh, three times in the last uh, uh, four years. And we have comfrey. We have about 200 comfrey plants outside, and then we have them inside as well. Let's go over in the uh, Mediterranean greenhouse and um, have a look at the fig tree. I like that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I slept there. You get, I've got a pot of coffee I made for you in there. Oh, you oh, you want to go get it? Or? It's, the, it's the one in the coffee uh, machine. This is the Mediterranean greenhouse drum? Yeah, this is the Mediterranean greenhouse. The house is our 25 year old fig tree. Whoa. And you can see over here, how prolific this is. Uh, you already had some fruit um, on the old wood, but you can see this is just wow. drooping with figs everywhere. And these will be ripe in about a, a month or so. When it's minus 10 outside, how cold is it in here? Uh, in here, it can get down to 15 degrees. Um, okay. And it doesn't kill anything, but that's just by design. Mediterranean plants are all dormant during the winter time. Okay. have a look outside in the uh, in the forest garden. All of our greenhouses surrounding them we, we plant a lot of flowering plants but these are also medicinal plants and culinary plants so we've tinctured about two gallons of, of uh, St. John's wort already this year and uh, we'll be doing some more in here. So the water off the roof of waters all these plants then the insect, insects come here and they find their way inside the greenhouse as well to pollinate. We have a 6.3 kilowatt power plant up on the roof that provides for all of our electricity. There's four varieties of grapes along the east of this greenhouse with wisteria. Jerome, we're on a pretty steep mountain over there. Are, you, are we on the top here? Are we on the top ridge? No, no, no. We're just on one of the sub ridges. Originally, I didn't do any uh, farming here. I wasn't wasn't successful in anything that I tried because uh, that was before I knew about permaculture. Before permaculture probably even existed, and I rented two acres down on, in in basalt or in, in truck farm for a couple of years. We, we annual gardened here for about ten years, just doing salad greens and herbs for the, for the aspen market, and then we converted into what we see here as a food yeah. forest. Now this is an apple tree from the East German Extension Center. Uh, this is goji berries that are, that are just kind of going viral here. We just stripped off the leaves here to dry for teas. 
Carpathian walnut, English walnut. Um, you can see the, the Siberians are huge. We hoppice some of them, but we don't always get around right. This year we're harvesting seed. Plum that I grafted uh, six varieties onto this year. These cherries ready? Yeah, those are ready. They might have a this one? bug in it. Let's see. Yeah, we picked some. These, yeah, these are ready, yeah. yeah. We have uh, three varieties of sour cherries. This is a pear called the Highlands Pear Elderberry, which we use for um, making syrups. And we just harvested the garlic in here yesterday. Okay. To choke out the garlic and also the, qu the quack grass as well. The apples with uh, a row of raspberries. We have about more pears. So we have our, our token ducks here that are swimming around in their dinner. They eat duckweed and they uh, eat comfrey and they also eat grain from the brewery that we haven't put out yet this morning. And that's it, that's it, that's all you feed them? Yeah. Bank here, this is uh, an eastern exposure. We can grow things over here that are very uh, much more tender and, and ah. ripen faster. There's a hardy pecan, hazelnuts, Wellington mulberry. The sun, there's double sun off the pond. <coughs> there's no duckweed here in the spring. The sun comes up in the east, comes here, and hits this pond, reflects onto those stone walls. That heats that area up. So this creates a microclimate. There's a grape growing all the way to the top of that pinion tree. Five varieties of apples grafted onto this tree. This area here, we're standing about five feet above the ground level. We just threw snags down. It was a really deep ravine through a, a rotten logs and boards that we weren't going to use and uh, anything that didn't have paint on it. Um, twisted boards and big stumps that we couldn't saw up 10, 15 years. We just threw it in here. And then we brought in some subsoil and terraced this place and brought in the rocks and we turned it into another part of the food forest. And you can see every place we have our nursery tucked away wherever there's some shade. This is our favorite mulberry tree here. It's called Basalt Mountain Bliss. We've had to share it with the tangiers a little more than we usually do, but these are the really great mulberries to pick on there. <laughs> They're, um, and usually the birds eat the top half, but this year they've been... I think the, the choke cherries just came on over here. This is what we plant for the birds. So now they're over here eating those. The main things I like to talk about is carbon farming. And forest gardening is one technique. We also bring in carbon since we are working on very shallow soils here. We have to build soils with extra carbon. So not only do we grow it and keep it in the ground on the ground, but we bring in leaves, rotten hay, wood chips, and sawdust to augment all of that. We put pallets across here. In the fall, when this freezes, it would be in November, um, we cut everything down and just lay it down for mulch. And then we put more organic matter on there, sort of the sheet mulching, so that throughout the winter, the worms We'll eat all that up. Then we put pallets down here and put our nursery in here that we store over the winter. Oh, while wow, the, the uh, soil is building, and this is the kind of soil we can build with just stacking and um, mulching. Got a grant from the Forest Service to limb up pinion and juniper, so instead of burning or chipping all the branches, we laid them on the contour here we just uh, supported them with some tea stakes this is more broadcasted with a sand mix of vegetables uh, lots of this stuff is volunteer uh, some of the squash is volunteer some of it uh, we just planted winter squash and this will kind of canopy over here and fill right into here our goal is to let get most of these terraces to just take get on take on a life of their own so this this one here has uh, mostly volunteer stuff it's, catnip and sunflowers. There's apricot tree right here in the middle and then there's a beautiful sage plant down there. So those are stuff that we planted. Everything else is uh, sort of um, volunteering. There's wildflowers coming in here, Indian rice grasses. Every, every terrace has a different succession. So this one here has summer and winter squash, fava beans and sunflowers and kale, comfrey. So you can see the wildflowers and some Ornamental stuff has come in here, and there's yellow clover. 
So this is a good way to uh, kind of revitalize uh, the forest itself because the forest getting a little extra water. Um, uh, we're in the 20 year drought, so this kind of offsets this, this technique, even if we didn't have water here, would offset uh, the drought because it's catching all of the water and catching all the organic matter. That way, nothing leaves the site. See, here's what, what these swales can catch all of this, all these pine cones. And then I've you know, broadcasted clover and vetches in there and black medic, and they start to spill over, reseed themselves throughout the whole area. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. Checking out the animals. What is your name and what is your role here? Hey, I'm Vanessa Harmony. I now run the edible landscape nursery here at Kirby. Okay. So we sell fruit trees, fruit shrubs, grapevines, um, perennial plants, uh, edible and otherwise useful for your high altitude garden. Nice. And then plus having the greenhouses, we're able to offer perennial edible plants in all climates. Cool. We have rabbits in the hutches for breeding, but we also have sort of a free range rabbit tree here where we can just let them kind of wander in here. They're really happy. We just harvested the garlic yesterday, but we also pulled up some weeds and mostly crack grass. This is animal food, so this is their uh, breakfast. And we also got spent grain, and we also, I picked up apples from the yellow transparent, which one of the earliest apples that fruits downtown. I don't even grow this variety here. It's stuff off the ground, so they get the chance to uh, recycle the the fruit that wasn't going to be eaten. And uh, they really liked uh Yeah, there's one over there. So she's very happy about having that, that apple. Right? <laughs> Doing a little apple dance there. Put them in the freezer and we have a sustainable crop of meat, which we also harvest all of the manure from this, this stable here. And we make worm worm castings out of that or we use it for mulch. And we have enough chickens just to give us a, a dozen eggs every other day, so. John, this has been great. If people want more of you, where they, where should they go? What should they do? Well, obviously, they can go on our website, crmpi.org. Also have a new book out, Forest Garden Greenhouse. Uh, so all of that's on uh, our website. You can see lots of other uh, photos and videos about our programs. Uh, we, we do an academy. We'll be doing another design course next year. We're up to our 30th year of doing the design course, but we took a year off. We're also doing another book. We do tours, we sell tinctures, we sell uh, propagation material and tree uh, through Vanessa. We also have a consulting business, uh, Ecosystem Design, with my partner Michael Thompson, who's an architect. So we do greenhouse design uh, for greenhouse all around the world right now. After we just uh, finished a, a tropical greenhouse in Canada that has a swimming pool in it. And, uh, thank you very much. I'll well, leave the links below. Yeah.